Hey, everybody. Hello, YouTube. And patrons first. Oh, Patreon. Yes. Hello, Patreon. <laughs> Hello, Patreon and patrons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think uh, this video will probably give uh we'll get some early access for the patrons and then uh, um eventually you'll get it you youtube you youtube people so you can see it all you know episode one two three all the way through all the way through all but the way through or maybe maybe yet. we should be even more cutthroat and just make them by the patreon if they want to see all of them yeah you just have to so uh we're this is uh episode three of our of our new series, Paul and Paul and I my series, the Murakami Minisodes, where we are mm -hmm. reading through uh some of Haruki Murakami's short fiction in preparation for our longer podcast episode on his chonker, chonky boy novel, Killing Commendatore. Yes, and I think we'll probably ex keep doing this afterwards. Mm -hmm. I, so it's in preparation, but it'll be an ongoing series. Oh, yeah. Um, and we, we're starting with the collection. How many stories are actually in this? Seven? One, two, uh, three. Yeah, seven. Seven. Men Without Women. Um, and if you want to hear more about why we kind of started here, you can watch the first video in the series. Yes, beautiful. We are joined, as always, by the beautiful, the live, the spry, the athletic Haruki Murakami, runner extraordinaire. Hardworking runner man, hardworking runner man. Um, so we've done the first two stories in this collection, Drive My mm -hmm. Car and uh, Yesterday. And today we're going to talk about the third story, which is called An Independent Organ, which is a mysterious and weird title. Yeah, a title that I don't quite understand, to be honest. Well, yeah, I kind of we'll understand it. But but, or I don't know, who knows? There's no, who knows if I understand I think, it. I think I have an idea of what it means, but we'll see. This is lit, this is literature, man. It's all made up, dude. It's just yeah. like your opinion, man. It's fake. We made it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fiction. but it's fiction. It's all made up. <laughs> all made up. <laughs> um, before we start talking about the story, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have not already, it's the sp whatever, youtube.com, spinecrackers, I don't know. Subscribe to the Patreon if you really like this shit, uh, these these videos, these content, the podcast. Um, uh, we've been doing some interesting books lately um, on the main show, uh, and there is some other stuff. Paul, this might be breaking news to you. We're, there's another potential mini-sode series coming down the pike. Really? No, no spoilers. Um, Can you spoil it for me? Yeah, I will later. Or Okay. <laughs> Ooh, I'm so intrigued. Um, so there's stuff coming down the pike, stuff going on the YouTube, stuff going on the Patreon. We're making it happen. We just got the shout outs from our boy on YouTube, Orpheus, mm -hmm. who, spoiler alert for the patrons, may be making a, uh, an appearance on the podcast itself down the road. I hope he, I hope he chooses to do so. He's a good, smart guy. Really smart guy. I like if, his videos uh, a lot. If you somehow are watching this video and don't already know who he is, Go check out his channel on YouTube, Orpheus. Um, smart guy, good taste. It's like uh, Morpheus without the M. It's pretty exactly. easy to find. The Matrix. We should have named our our uh, channel EO. <laughs> <laughs> I think our podcast should just be named the The Matrix, but books. Books. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. Thank you. We love you so much. Thank you. All right, Paul, what's the story about, dude? The story is about a, a man named uh, Mr. Tanimura, Tanimura, who is describing his relationship with his friend, who is a plastic surgeon named Dr. Tokai. Right. Um, and it's basically about the, uh, the relationship issues or lack of any relationships that are meaningful in any way for this guy. Yes. Um, and he, uh, he basically, you know, he's got his own practice. He's a well-off individual making cash as a plastic surgeon. And he basically just has flings with women who um, they eventually just fizzle out, but he's described as being like a, a champion in the heartbreak situation where he just like right. he he allows it to fizzle out and uh 
no one gets their feelings hurt. Yeah. But basically what happens is he uh, ends up meeting a woman who is married. Um, and he's been seeing her for about a year and a half. And he basically realizes that he loves her and he can't stop thinking about her. And it kind of ends up destroying him and killing him. Yep. Um, so it's pretty it's, sad. It's told, <laughs> it's told through the recollections of the relationship that the narrator, Tani Mora, which by the way, Paul, I don't know if you noticed this, but Tani Mora was the narrator of the last story also yesterday. Oh, I did not notice that. Yeah. It's the, the first story doesn't have like a, a named narrator, but the second story, it's Tani Mora who becomes friends with um, whatever his name is, the, the eccentric um, Beatles singer, uh, huh. Kafuku, right? Or no, that's the first story. This, uh... anyway. Well, um, um, I didn't Kitaru, Kitaru, that. Kitaru. I didn't pick up on that, but. Well, the, he's, he's only named like once or twice in Yesterday. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't come up very often what his actual name is, but he's referred to as Tanimura. Um, and I, th and I think so, so it's interesting that he is now, um, used again in this story because at the end of yesterday, Tani Mora, when he meets Erica at the party later on is, has become a writer, right? And the Tani Mora in this story is also a writer. So I think oh, we're supposed okay. to be supposed to be thinking that it's the same character. It's gotta be. Gotta be. So he, Enough yeah. Clues. So he's recounting this relationship that he has with, yeah, yeah. They have the same name. <laughs> <laughs> and they're both yeah but yes um so he he's recounting his relationship with tokai who's this yeah basically kind of like a he's like a nice american psycho yeah <laughs> yeah not exactly like a sex addict but like you know, many he, many relationships none of them particularly deep he always cuts them off before he gets too invested mm -hmm. um you know he's a plastic surgeon by trade i think you mentioned that and he just kind of goes through life without developing any long-term relationships with women, hence it, the story's inclusion in this collection. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, he falls in love with the woman and um, she's married. And so essentially what happens is he just kind of stops contacting Tanimura. He stops showing up at the gym that they go to together. And it turns out that he died. And Tanimura goes to meet his secretary, which is a guy named uh, Goto or Go. What is that right? Yep. Goto uh, and Goto tells him this story about how Tokai basically just essentially just stopped eating and stopped doing anything and and just fucking starved himself to death because this woman it turns out she, she not only did she not get with Tokai ultimately who was madly in love with her the first time he was really in love with anyone in his life she but she left her husband and went with a third man a younger man a younger man Mm. and uh took i could Tokai's, not handle it yeah it was a, it was pretty brutal honestly the way the, the way he's his death is described it's basically like it's basically like the fucking um i forget which character which uh sin it is in seven that dies by being tied to the bed and like starved oh yeah oh that's uh is it it's not it's no, not, not it's not gluttony and i don't think it's vanity i don't remember what it is yeah, it's a chilling scene. It, I mean, it's not. I I wasn't picturing it that graphically. Oh, I was actually man. I kind of was. You were. Yeah. I was picturing it more like uh, it reminded me of the beginning of Moon Palace, the first like eighty pages of Moon Palace, with the character just like choosing to stoically starve and starve and waste away. Out of yeah, but he's just. I don't know, but he's described as like um, he's just he can't even get up. He's like ribs are showing he's like just stuck on his bed and he, he's described like goto describes him as like um here I'll, I'll read this a little bit this is what this is goto describing him entering tokai's apartment after he had stopped showing up to work when i saw him i was sure he was dead my heart felt like it was going to stop but he wasn't dead he turned his gaunt pale face in my direction opened his eyes and looked at me he blinked a few times he was breathing though faintly he just lay there unmoving. The colors pulled up to his neck. I spoke to him, but got no reaction. His dry lips were closed tight, like they were sewn shut. He hadn't shaved for a long time. I opened the windows to let in some fresh air. That sounds pretty dire. Yeah, definitely dire. Um, I just wasn't picturing like a tortured guy with like no eyelids or, you know. 
Well, I didn't say it was and tortured, so. <laughs> but he lo- he just looks like the 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 it, the dried out kind of husk of that. I mean, that guy in Seven, it's the same thing. You think he's dead, and then he's like, Ugh. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it reminded me of just like a cancer patient or something. You know? Yeah. Like, I think they described him as being like 160 pounds normally, and then when he died, he was 80 pounds. Mm-hmm. Um. So it becomes so yeah, a sort of he he's Goto describes it as a sort of anorexia because he basically stopped eating. Yeah um so yeah it's a it's a true story of uh of heartbreak to the point mm-hmm. of death um and then ultimate and then he gives he gives tanimura as his like final parting gift a squash racket like an expensive squash racket that because they yeah. played squash together and the, one little nice detail about that racket is uh when uh tanimura uses it, it he, he describes it as being too light when right. he uses it and it, it makes him think of his dead body yes yeah because he's so like light and 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 gaunt and and you know yeah um nice little nice little literary touch yeah i mean i think that like um so it's so that's basically the whole story and then the title of the story paul we should mention the independent organ at the end tanimura recounts a conversation he had with tokai about how he thinks that essentially all women have an extra organ that makes them able to lie without without feeling bad about it oh i i missed this too i should i didn't read this book carefully enough that's probably um, what the title means yes that is that's like the last that's like i mean it, it is sort of right towards the end right but um yeah he says there's the other thing i remember very well about dr takai i can't recall how we got on the topic but he was chatting to me about women in general Women are born with a special independent organ that allows them to lie. This was Dr. Kai's, Dr. Tokai's personal opinion. It depends on the person, he said, and the kind of lies they tell, what situation they tell them in and how the lies are told. But at a certain point in their lives, all women tell lies and they lie about important things. They lie about unimportant things too, but they also don't hesitate to lie about the most important things. And when they do, most women's expressions and voices don't change at all since it's not them lying, but this independent organ they're equipped with that's acting on its own. <laughs> Um, possibly the most misogynist thing in the book so far yeah so yeah definitely and i think this story was so one of the comments that we've made about the other stories so far is that they're more they're less about men without women and more about like dudes with dudes like dudes rock and dude friendships and this one is about that a little bit but this one i think was more in line with the the sort of what i was expecting from some of these stories um yeah i don't know how you felt about that yeah definitely there was a lot less of like a a man man on man friendship being at the core of the story yeah um there's also there is ghosting though there was ghosting um what did you think of the uh like i i think that like a a lot of murakami stories and i think this is one criticism you have of his stories is that like you kind of you want him to make maybe some sort of statement or point about something and i think that this one had maybe not the clearest point but i think it was it had more of a it had something to say more so than the other two and maybe other stories i've read as well yeah i mean i i don't you know i I think that could be true i don't it's i I don't really think that's necessarily a a criticism that i have i don't mind i don't mind a story that's not like making a, a claim or making a point I, that, that's just sort of an observation that i generally have about murakami i mean like you said i think last time a lot of his stories are just sort of based around these kind of like weird coincidences and shit that like just never really gets an answered and that's kind of how life works and so there's that element of realism in what he does and there's even a little bit of that in this right like takai starts really like analyzing his life after reading a, a book about the holocaust and sort of be, sort of being like holy crap like what's the what what am i doing like what's what's the point of my life i'm a fucking plastic surgeon who doesn't have any like meaningful relationships and he starts to kind of like reflect a little bit and then goto independently kind of when he's talking to tanimura at the diner explaining to him about tokai's death says that he looked like a, a holocaust sort of uh, uh you know victim in a concentration camp but he found him yeah that's a that's a major thread in the story i think like his his uh reaction after reading this story about the holocaust like really affects him yeah and he um he 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 comes out and asks 
Tony Murrow, like, who who am I? And it kind of takes Tony Murrow, like, off his guard a little bit, like, shut, rocks him back because he 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 knows him as being such a confident guy who doesn't really ask these kind of existential cr- uh, questions like this, right? Um, but I, this is like a a weird like soul search that he's having. Like he he describes this doctor in the Holocaust story that he read that like when when he was stripped of everything, he still had these skills that the uh, Nazi officers like may or may not have use for. So he had like value in the uh, in the camp. And it, it really like it strikes Tukai uh All right, we're back. We just uh <laughs> Some minor technical issues, yeah. but um, Paul, you were talking about the the doctor, the the Holocaust doctor that he was that uh, Tokai was reading about. Yeah, I think it really it just really affected his him him as a person. This story, for whatever reason, it just like it, it made him think about what he would be like if he was stripped down to nothing and had no possessions. Right. Um, and he just he he doesn't really hold a lot of value in the skill set that he has, which is just being a plastic surgeon. Yep. Um, and uh, I think that made him maybe a little bit more open to loving somebody. Maybe mm. he maybe he was just like reconsidering his life a little bit, and then he ends up falling in love with this woman. But it also ends up killing him, which is like a dark twist of you know allowing well, he, yourself to. Yeah, he basically chooses to die. Is basically the way it's described. He kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think here's my here's my kind of like deep take on it. I think that his physical anorexia at the end of his life is basically a mirror of his emotional anorexia for all the rest of his life. Him sort of being un being unwilling to seek or 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 take in any emotional sustenance and like only having these completely superficial, completely like meaningless relationships and like essentially not you know not eating the actual s- nutritive sustenance like sustaining part of it which is that r- romantic connection that it goes deeper than just kind of the physical yeah i think that's a good point um one thing i want to bring up too in, in regard to this topic is he talks about how he wish he would have fallen in love earlier in life because he could have maybe developed love antibodies <laughs> yes <laughs> which i thought was funny um but yeah i don't know it's it's almost like suddenly the uh he doesn't want to have this emotional anorexia anymore and it's too much for him to handle and, right and it affects his physical body and mind and he dies well and it sort of becomes this thing where you know he he's very emotionally childish right he think he has he thinks that there's this like that all women are liars and they have this fucking, you know, special body part, which is, which is a very childish view because it's sort of like a young kid talking about like the mysteries of the female body or whatever, you know what I mean? And for him, it's the, it's, it's that except it's emotionally. Mm -hmm. And ultimately that's kind of what, what drives him over the edge because he's never really had to deal with, he, like you said, he's never built up those antibodies and he's had this kind of like emotionally stunted, like emotionally anorexic, like life. And ultimately um, the first sign of the first problem he encounters, he can't handle. Basically. Yeah, it is kind of a childish thing, even though it is, you know, you feel bad for him. Obviously he got, he was in love with, you know, he was in love with this woman and then she was having an affair with another guy this whole time yeah it, it totally sucks yeah so um but i think you're right it is a little childish just he, he's been so stunted his whole life emotionally and then the one time something terrible happens he just can't handle it uh yeah i actually i was thinking the title of this book could have been a like the last title which is a, a beatles title it could have been love is all you need or is it <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah true but there i mean there are actually like seriously though there are some uh themes about love in this little short story oh, that of course. are important yeah. you know it's like 
do you do you, they had discussions about like do you need to fall in love and be in love with someone at least f- f- um for some aspect some parts of your life to have a fulfilling life and that's a question the story asks and i think it's a good one yep um but then you know another question to ask is like is it worth it to fall in love and then have your heart broken because you could kill yourself <laughs> well right but i mean i think that that's the like that's the that's really the ultimate kind of indictment of Tokai is that the only reason he did that is because, you know, like, I mean, obviously people kill themselves over love as adults, like as mature adults that have had, you know, normal lives, but he, (laughs) I mean, he basically kills himself like the first time he gets dumped basically. And he's, you know, what in his fifties or something. Yeah. He's like 52. And um, I think that's kind of the, you know, childishness of it, right? Where he, you know, it's not a, it's a, it's a bit of a weird situation, right? She's married and then she leaves her husband and then goes with a third guy, not him who she was having the first affair with, which is, you know, I don't know, probably not super common, but uh, whatever. It's a sort of a standard kind of breakup. Like there's nothing insanely dramatic about it. And I mean, it's implied that she was sort of using him for money and stuff like that. Um, Yep. Although none of that is particularly like clear. Um, yeah, it, it is kind of childish too. Cause when he's talking about how, like how he feels about her and he's t- saying that like, you know, I can't, I can't stop. I think about her all day. It's, it's, it's like a teenager talking about their first crush. And you know? um, <laughs> yeah. And, and Tani Mora actually mentions that, right. When they're talking about it, he says, you know, they, that's like explicitly mentioned. So this is on 96, 97. And this is Takai talking. It's always di- uh, so. Tani Mora asks him, "How often do you see her?" Takai says, "It's always different and depends on her husband's schedule. That's one of the things that's so hard for me. When he's off on long business trip, we can see each other a lot. Her parents look after her child, or else she hires a babysitter. But when her husband's in Japan, weeks can go by without us seeing each other. Those times are awful. It's a cliche, I know, but when I think I might never see her again, if I feel like I'm being torn in two. <laughs> I listened to him without comment. His choice of words, though trite, didn't strike me as cliched. In fact, he sounded it sounded pretty real. But again, of course, that's a childish like. It's like a little like you're tearing me apart, Lisa. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that was my yeah. first thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I feel like Tokai really is this this childish character, this emotionally stunted character. I think you're right, but I think he also does ask a very adult question when he's asking about like if I'm stripped down to just me as a person, bare bones, who am I? So, right. but then again, maybe that could be considered a childish question too to ask when you're 52. Well, I, I think the thing is, it it's the I think like the 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 point again that maybe I don't know if Murakami's trying to make this point or, but I think it's childish for that to be the first time you ever ask that question right when you're like that that is a question that people ask throughout their lives but like usually the first time you do it is at like fucking i don't know 17 or some shit you know what i mean yeah and then probably again in like your late 20s or 30s you know or just or in any at any amount of time in between it's like just him being you know this middle-aged guy and for the first time in his life being like hmm I might want to think about like purpose and meaning. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I'm not saying he's not a sympathetic character, but I, I think he is, he's kind of this emotional homunculus. He's just not capable of, of, you know, and he's been able to kind of stave it off for his whole life via these, you know, he literally, I mean, he literally has his secretary basically schedule his love life his secretary like schedules his meetings with these various women on various days. And like, it's, it's, it's this, he's so disengaged, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think a part of that, you know, that lack to engage with his emotions might've come from just him having a financially stable life. It seems like Like, if he was a doctor, he probably just had a fine life, you know, in college and probably got a job right after. So he just always had these comforts. And I think he, uh, you know, the part of his comforts were, was, was uh, meeting women. It yep. was just a comfort to him. It wasn't like a real friendship, even though he describes it as being very cordial. Um, 
it was like a women to him were just like commodities. It was right. like an, a thing to do. Well, and the I think it's important that you bring up the like him being a doctor and being basically probably rich and generally well off because that comes up too. This sort of like undercurrent of class where you know um, they're talking and 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 you know he says like. Uh, Tanamura basically is like, look, man, oh, you're, you're, you're trying to strip yourself down and get to the bare bones of yourself. And he's like, you know, some people are, some people are basically born with everything already taken away from them. Right. They like have to start with absolutely nothing. And, and he says, um, uh, I pointed out, this is um, Tanamura speaking, I pointed out hesitantly that starting out life as a pared down human with nothing might not after all be that easy. You're right, Takai said. You're absolutely right. Starting life with nothing must be hard. In that sense, I'm more blessed than most. Still, when you get to a certain age and have created your own lifestyle and social standing and only then start to have grave doubts about your value as a human being, that becomes pretty trying to in a different sense. And so, yeah, I think which, he's which just, is true. You know, it is, it's not, yeah, it's not it like, true. but you know, uh, Tanamura definitely has a good point, though, too. It's like, uh, like you're kind of just being a sad rich boy. Yeah, exactly. You're just being a sad rich boy. And it's kind of off-putting, even though your pain, okay, it is legitimized. You're feeling actual pain. Right. But yeah, just maybe just stop it and rethink, <laughs> rethink what's happening. But it was too late. He died. Yeah, they died. He just stopped. <laughs> they, that was the last time I saw him, I was having that conversation. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. No, no magical realism again. I know. I, 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 I kind of sense that we're not going to have any. Which again, but who knows? You know, yeah, that's that's sort of been my. Uh, that was part of again, as we say in the first video, it's part of why I wanted to do this is because the first. Well, I won't talk about it. Go watch the other videos if you want to hear about why. But yeah, yeah again, for the third story in a row, there's no uh, none of that traditional or that that Murakami magical realism that he's that he's supposedly known for <laughs> that hasn't been really yeah. anything I've read of his still yet. I mean, obviously, I'm reading Killing Commendatory, and that's that's part of it, but. Everything else, um, I guess I've just missed. I've missed the ones that have that. And I think you're probably right that we're not going to get much of that in this, in the rest of this. Although, who knows? He might just drop yeah, one knows? in there out of nowhere that's, uh, that's funky. That would be cool. I would love that. Yeah. Um, but uh, I liked it again, though. It was good. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. I don't. Uh, do you want to do you want to rate it? Yeah, let's rate it. I mean, I think. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what to th- I don't know what to think about it. It's I, I forget the ratings that we've gone for all the other ones. We've been right around three point right around like middle time. middle threes. I think I think for me this one was a little bit lower. I think this is my actually least favorite of the three so far. Mine too, um, actually. Even though, as you say, I think it's one of the first ones that kind of like I think you're able to distill kind of a a message in some ways, which is about kind of Takai's emotional stuntedness and like how that that becomes harmful and and self destructive if you live that try to live that way for too long um yeah i mean it's different because uh, all of the characters interactions with each other are fine they're, they're finalized like yeah um yes the 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 woman is off with a new man um takai is dead and tani Mura is just left w- with like knowing what had happened clearly right which is kind of a different thing for mirakabi usually it's like people are left wondering or questioning about this and that but this was very clear cut yep yep there's definitely some finality here that hasn't that has not been the case in in the other two so far and in yeah. and in just what i've read of murakami generally yeah so it was a good it was a good change all right what's your what's your rating paul i'm gonna give it 3.25 that's pretty much exactly where i was at. i was gonna say 3.23 oh sick so wow that's right uh, a little bit, little bit on the lower end compared to the other ones in the book. But uh, you know, again, it's Murakami. It's nice to read. It's interesting. You get, you catch, you can, you just catch vibes. Yeah, it's good. Good storyteller. Good words. Good words on paper. <laughs> good words on paper. <laughs> just, <laughs> just reviewing a book, just like an absolute caveman, just like good word on paper. Good word on paper. What else do you need from a book? Yeah. What else do you need? I mean, that's literally all like the book, font that's all great font in this possibly book. be yeah the only thing a book could possibly be is good words on paper yeah the font yeah I, I like the font i don't know how i feel about the page the page numbering like i don't i like 
like it has the title of the story on the right hand side and then the page number on the left like i want my page numbers on every page you know oh it's a big, i don't yeah. i don't i don't want to have to like subtract one every time damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah fuck that <laughs> this book fucking sucks this is this is english literature it's not math class exactly it's this is actually not english literature well it's in english now what well, is now <laughs> um all right well any other any final thoughts paul yep um i'm uh i'm thinking that i'm excited for the next one and i'm also thinking that we should i mean i assume we're going to do a a a last grading of the whole book the whole book yeah definitely and i think i'm just i'm wondering more if if uh there's going to be more tie-ins potentially now that tani mora tani mora is in two of these books so uh, stories be, yeah. yeah that will be interesting yeah i'm ex- i mean i think yeah I, i'll be interested again because i that was one of the things going into this that i was curious about because i know i knew that the book was supposed to be sort of thematically tied together and i was wondering if there was going to be any other any other threads or through lines and i think we we saw that hint of one of those today yeah which is the same character in two stories amazing Amazing. All right, everybody. Uh, come back next time for episode four of the Murakami Minisodes, where we will be reading Skaharazad, which is uh, an interesting title because I'm familiar with that uh, that character. I am not. It's a, well, we'll talk about it on the next episode. Ooh, a little teaser. Teaser, baby. Bye. Bye. Whoop, whoop.